Hi crafters, welcome to a jewelry trinket box tutorial video. I'm Shari Philomahala here at the Graphic 45 office. I'm so excited to teach you how to take one of our ATC book boxes and transform it using our princess paper collection into one of these gorgeous keepsakes. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to enhance your chipboard by adding fussy cuts as well as layering those pieces. I'm also gonna teach you how to shabby chic up your uh, rose bouquet sets. This is all a part of our club G45 series brought to us by Robin Shakur this month. And this is volume two for 2019. If you're not already a member of Club G45, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and join the club. So you can find all the description and the details in the description below. So go ahead and do that and let's get started. So let's give you an up close look at how beautiful this jewelry box really is. So you can see we are gonna be creating feet out of our metal brads, as well as adding some real dimension and adding some white paint to really shabby chic up those rose bouquet sets and inside. This is perfect for housing tags, um, all sorts of different crafty trinkets. Wouldn't this be super cute in your craft space or as a gift? I'm thinking this would be great for any girl's room or craft room. So the things that you're gonna need to create this are our ATC book box, our princess 12 by 12 collection pack, which comes with stickers and you're gonna need some brads. We're gonna be using some double-sided tape. This is from a scrapbook adhesives by 3L and um, this project sheet. So if you are a Club G45 member, you get the club or the project sheet in your uh, box of goodies. If you are not, you can go ahead and follow along um, using any Graphic 45 products you have. And there is a printable project sheet in the description below. So we've got you covered for that as well as you're gonna need some rose bouquet sets from Graphic 45 and our princess chipboard to add some extra dimension. For step one, we are going to grab those rose bouquet sets. This is the precious pink. We are gonna take three of the largest size of the roses, as well as two of the, both of those medium roses that you get in your package. We're gonna take those leaves out of there, as well as one of these cute little rose buds. And we are gonna start to shabby chic these up using some just whatever ivory or white acrylic paint that you have uh, in your craft storage. Um, and so I'm advising that if you wanna keep it simple, I'm just taking the plastic off of our metal brads that we'll be using later. And I'm gonna pour a little bit of paint in there and just using a brush, brush it on. So I'm just using some of this folk art acrylic paint and just a bit in there that was a lot more than I had anticipated but that's how things go on camera and then just grabbing a little bit of that paint I am going to start to dab it on to the ends of my petals so as much as you want or as little as you want it's really your own style and if you do not have a brush at home you can always use your fingertip or a paper towel so just working from the outside edges and then working in that is going to add just a really nice shabby chic touch and if you want to go a little bit extra you can just pop a little bit on the backs of those petals as well. So then I'm going to, from my leftover rose bouquet pack, I'm just gonna set this down and let it dry. 
over here and then continue to work on my other pieces. So now we are going to shabby chic up the rest of our pieces. So I'm just going to grab one petal at a time and just add a bit, just a touch of that paint to those. Frost those tips. All right. So this is looking super cute so far and then maybe just brush a little bit more on some of those raised embossed areas. Now that these are all painted up, I'm gonna go ahead and put them to the side to dry. However, if you do not have any acrylic ink at home, you can always use some of our Graphic 45 Decades inks or whatever inks that you have and just make those a little more vintage, a little more dimensional by adding your own ink. Here I've used our Venetian lace and you can see it's just giving it a really nice vintagey feel. So you can always choose your own technique. And an extra fun tip when you're trying to get some of that paint off of your nails, you can always use a little bit of Gooby Gone on your paper towel and that'll get it right off. For step two, we are going to take If the Crown Fits and we are going to cut this to be four and five eighths by three and a half. And then we are going to be uh, creating a U shape so this piece will fit nicely onto our ATC book box. So um, I just realized a really fun and easy way is to take that adhesive that you get in your kit if you are a Club G45 member or if you are not, this is just double-sided tape that's one quarter of an inch. So because that is the measurement we need exactly, we can just flip it over because we want our word side up and we want our words to be facing us, so reading it right side up. And I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna create a U shape, just making sure I'm getting right on the edge of my paper. And you can go ahead and cut that. And just go all the way around. And then that should give us that perfect one fourth of an inch border that we are looking for. Alternatively, you can, of course, use your ruler like it says to in the instructions and go ahead and adhere. Uh, use your ruler and measure a fourth all the way around the two sides and the front. And then we're going to go ahead and cut this out. So just using some scissors or if you want to use your paper piercer, go ahead and do that but I'm using some nice uh, fine tip cutter bee scissors and I'm just cutting along the edge of those three strips that I put down. And I'm trying to keep this nice and straight. Once this U shape has been cut out, we will take our adhesive off and adhere it onto the foot of our book box. So I have adhered that down and it did need a little bit of finesse to get it right on there. So you do wanna make sure that before you take off the backing that this is gonna fit perfectly on the foot of your box. And then go ahead and just slowly, I would uh, take off one piece at a time as you adhere it down. Step four, we have taken roses for royalty and we've cut it down to four and five eighths by two and a fourth. And now we are gonna add some adhesive onto the back and this is gonna go on the inside of our binding of our book box. And you can see your book's box is going to come with some extra little trinkets in there as well. And you can go ahead and throw away this. We will be using one of these tags later, so we'll go ahead and save that to the side. These other pieces uh, you can use for another project. 
So now that we've adhered this down, just taking some kind of brayer or ruler, whatever flat surface, uh, you wanna make sure you get out any air pockets that you have. For the top flap, we are taking if the crown fits, and we have cut this down to four and five eighths by three and a quarter. And we are going to adhere this onto our box. So again, just grabbing your double-sided adhesive. Let's get adhering. Just a few tips when using some double-sided adhesive. You do wanna make sure that you are getting a nice um, connection with your adhesive and your paper. So before you pull that up, you just wanna make sure that that is nice and sealed down. And then you can take a paper piercer or the tip of your scissors and just pull up the ends of these tape pieces nice and easy. Now that we've got that ready to go, we are gonna put this down and we have the sentiment side up and I want the sentiment to be reading right side up while I'm working with my box. So when I open up my lid, all the words are nice and legible and just squeeze out those air pockets. So you can see I have not been inking my edges and I think it looks super cute as is, but if you do wanna take it that extra mile, you can see Robin Shakur on her sample has used some really vibrant, nice inks. I would suggest using our Venetian lace. Uh, this is the Graphic 45 Decades ink, but we also have a, a precious pink that would look perfect as well. For step five, we are going to be cutting from Roses for Royalty. So we're using the stripe side up and we want these to be four inches by two and a fourth. And these are going to go on the long sides of the outside of our box. Perfect, once you've got it in the placement you want, you can go ahead and just make sure you're getting a nice good seal on those. And I've already added adhesive to this piece also, so let's go ahead and put her down. Now we're on to our short sides. And you can see this paper is actually the paper that my fingernails were modeled after. So cute. So this is our bell of the ball and it has been cut to three and one eighth and two and a fourth. And these are gonna go on the outside of our box. So just do the same steps as we just did for the stripes. Step eight, we are going to cut roses for royalty. And this is gonna be three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And we are gonna have this roses side up and then just using our beloved double-sided tape adhesive, we're gonna go ahead and glue this on the inside of your box. Um, but as far as when you're doing inside box pieces or just these kinds of things, I would always go ahead and make sure that your measurements are right on and that that piece is gonna fit nice nice and snugly in there without having any uh, odd corners up or other things like that. So we'll just add our adhesive now that we've gone ahead and measured to make sure that that fits inside. And, you know, we are loving this adhesive for so many reasons. It has 65 feet on one spool, so we can get a lot of good use out of this. And for these home decor projects that you know are going to weather a lot of hands, a lot of ooing and aahing, you wanna make sure that you're using the best adhesive. So let us know what you like to use for your projects. What kind of inks you like. If you've tried the Decades ink, we always love to hear your feedback and love to hear what your favorite colors are. Or, you know, if you're creating this project, you might be making it maybe more masculine for a, a boy's birthday. We'd love to hear what collections you are using when doing that. You know, my son, who's six years old, saw this project and thought that it would be cute in another project or another paper collection for his room. So I'm thinking 
we could make him a little proper gentleman box. Wouldn't that be super cute? But I need to get something in there that has more of a straight edge. So I'm going to use my ruler to make sure that I'm really getting this paper on. So I've added some adhesive onto the short side of one of my pieces. And now I'm going to just get it nicely where I want it placed. So you can see I'm just starting at one edge and seeing how I like everything squared up. And then I'll just keep moving it in the direction that I want it to go. And using again something that has a nice flat edge and burnishing down that paper and I will do the same for all three sides so for step nine we are gonna start decorating the inside of our box so we are gonna pop out this super cute a real princess tag and we are gonna add some two brads to it just to give it a nice finished polished feel as well as one of those small flowers that we inked up earlier painted up whatever you did earlier so we're just going to pull out two of these two of those brads put it over here to the side and one of these small shabby chic flowers we are going to start putting this together so just to show you what we're doing super cute so um if you have a crocodile that's going to be the easiest thing to do uh, if you do not have a crocodile you can go ahead and use uh, either a paper piercer or um, you can use you can actually even just take the flanges off the brads and use them that way but we are going to use them how they were intended so I've gone ahead and with my crocodile I've just punched two small holes and I'm doing this in the first one up in the top right corner and I did it you can see on the corner of my frame and then my brad just slides right in there and then I will push my flanges down and then I will do the same. So I'm going to punch two holes now towards this, towards this bottom right corner and I don't want my holes to touch each other but I want them to be close and this time I accidentally used the large hole punch. So I'll use the small one there. It'll all work out. That slides in beautifully just close those flanges and it's already looking great and now we are going to take this and we are going to use uh, just a spot of some liquid adhesive to adhere this down so I'm just using some of 3L's liquid adhesive you can use whatever you have at home hot glue whatever your favorite is So this is going to glue onto our chipboard piece. While I'm holding this in place, I'm just gonna kind of play with the petals just a little bit. Move those around. And I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry for a second. So I've added my 3D foam adhesive to the back and now I'm going to put it on the inside of inside center of my box but I don't want to push this down too hard I want it to be nice and straight but I do want to make sure that it is going to clear the top and it's going to sit down just nicely so this does work out well where it goes into the box and so now I can go ahead and apply pressure make sure that we're adhering that down looking good 
step 10, we are going to be creating the bottom of our box. So we'll go ahead and flip this upside down. We wanna make sure that this is upside down when we're working on this. And we are gonna cut a piece of pretty in pink to four and 11 sixteenths by three and a half. And of course, all these measurements are in the printed project sheet that you get with your kit, or it's also going to be um, in the description where you can print that out. So we don't want to adhere this down just yet because we are going to take our rulers and we are going to measure three quarters of an inch in from each edge. So just with our ruler, measure three quarters of an inch from all four corners and we are going to create feet little metal feet with our brackets so it's not really an idea because these when we use them on the bottom of the box just going to look like little purse feet and give them a nice polished look so again i've measured now, just using uh, either a paper piercer or a crocodile, we're gonna do the, just like we uh, punched out holes before. So I am going to punch a small hole on either side of my marking on all four of these corners. And this is where our metal brads will go. So now that I've punched all those holes, I'll just take out four of these metal brads. So flipping them over, just want to get those legs up straight and then wiggle those out by pushing out through the back. And once you get all four of those out, you can go ahead and add them to our holes that we've created. So I've got all four of my brads off and ready to go. You can see that they've been pushed down and so now I can adhere this down to the bottom of my box just using that same adhesive. Uh, I did want to show you that there is another way that some of our designers prefer to do and use these is they like to pop off the breads just like so. So by using some needle nose pliers it's easiest if you leave the bread in the package when you're doing this and then you can just pop those tops right off and then using a nice metal adhesive like E6000 or uh, glossy accents you can use these uh, as is um, however you want. So just a fun little tip. Now that it's adhered down just pushing out any air bubbles I have finally found my bone folder so I don't have to use that ruler anymore. So I flipped my box right side up and now for step 11 we are going to cut a piece of belt of the ball to 4 and 11 fifteenths by 2 and 7 sixteenths and add your adhesive and adhere this onto the outside binding of your box. Now on to step 12. I'll put our box to the side for now. And we are going to take a scoreboard and one of those tags that you received in the box. And we are going to score this from the bottom of the tag. And we want it to be scored at two and a quarter. So just go ahead and score that on that score line with the grommet up. All right, so now we are going to take Belle of the Ball, this beautiful polka dot paper again, and cut it to three by five inches. We do want to be mindful of how we're using this paper uh, because we will be using the leftover portion for the back side of our tag. So I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm going to circle where that grommet hole is. And that's just going to be the first thing that I'm going to do. Uh, this is just a fun way of showing you how to cover our tags uh, DIY style. So then taking a half inch circle punch, I just punch that out in the center. And the grommet itself is a half an inch, so our hole needs to be slightly larger than that. So now you can see I just have a sliver more on one side and then I'll do the same on the reverse side making it about a five-eighths of an inch hole. 
now that I've done that, you can see this does fit nicely onto through the grommet. And now I can add some adhesive to my tag and then cut out the excess. So I am going to use some liquid adhesive for this step and just going around the edges, creating a nice fine line for now. And then I'll add a little bit more to the center as well. So just using some liquid adhesive, we want our polka dots to be grommet side up, which is that nice rounded side. And then go ahead and use our bone folder to adhere this like so. And if you do need a little extra help getting your paper all the way underneath your grommet, you can just use a bone folder or your fingernail just to help guide it all the way around. And then once we've done that, you'll just take your fine tip scissors and cut off the excess. Then of course, if you are a big G45er, you know all about our tags. We have our tags in four different sizes. We have a, this is our smallest size, the ATC size, artist trading tag size. And then we also have them in large, regular, as well as square. So because these tags are such a huge staple of ours and people have loved them for so many years, we've gotten a lot of requests to come out with metal dies that go along to do exactly what we're doing in this step. And so we did come out with those um, and we do have these in all the different sizes. So if you have a die cut machine, you can go ahead and pick up this die and do it that way. If you already have the die, go ahead and use the die. Um, but we just wanted to show you the old school way of how this is uh, how we cover them without using a die. All right, so now with our excess piece, we are going to cover our flap on the back side. So we're making sure that every nook and cranny of this project is gonna be super cute. So I've just measured it up with that score line. Go ahead and put that down and trace our circle again. And then again, using our half inch circle punch, I'm gonna go ahead and capture this right in the center. But because this doesn't have the beveled edge like the front side of the tag, I don't need to do that excess punching. So one punch is good enough and can go ahead and make sure this is a straight line. Oops. So we now at this point can go ahead and adhere this on and then cut off the excess. So again, just using my liquid, I'm gonna add that to my tag. And polka dot side, polka dot side up, match my hole. And nice and easy. Now we just cut out the excess. Looks like I need to go back in a little bit more and get some of those edges. Just make those crisp, beautiful edges. All right, so for the last thing of this step, we are gonna take some coordinating ribbon and we have cut this down to seven inches. 
simply fold this in half and then threading it through the front side of our tag we have created a loop and we're going to tuck those tails through that loop both those tails come on and just pull now it's looking good and if you want to take it that extra step we're going to go ahead and trim these tails to look nice and fancy just like our box so i have just folded them together and then i'm going to cut in a v shape and doing them together was not the best idea so one at a time cut those in a v shape So cute. And then you can see that I've also was just playing around and using that same technique that we uh, did on the roses I added to our tag. And I think that that would be really fun to add throughout the whole project. So I think I might go ahead and go back and do that to some of the, uh, um, or some of the raised pieces. But now at this point, I've added adhesive to the back of my tag and I'm finding the center and this is just going to glue or adhere right in the center with that flap going down. This is going to add as our handle for our super cute jewelry box. Step 13, we are going to cut pretty in pink to four and three fourths by three and a half. And we're going to go ahead and adhere this onto the top of our box. Now that that's been adhered right side up, I'm gonna turn my box around. So now you can see my hearts and crowns are upside down. And for step 14, I'm gonna take two of our large flowers that we altered and one of those leaves. And we are going to start adhering our pieces onto the top of our box. So just using some liquid adhesive, I'm gonna run this right down the stem of our leaf. Flip this over. And I'll show you what we're doing here. So we just want this to be a little more centered and a little rounded like so and then i've already added a little bit of liquid adhesive to the backs of these and these are going to go in the center just kind of nestled up against each other and then we'll go ahead and let those dry step 15 we are going to take bell of the ball and cut this to four and three fourths by two and a half and then flip that over we are going to now take our largest chipboard piece. This is a nice frame that's nestled in, but we are gonna be using both pieces for the sentiment and the showstopper of our box. And this, we are going to adhere onto this paper, like so. And then we will begin to cut it out, but uh, be sure. I'm going to try something a little new so we can see if how this works. So just adding our adhesive to the back of our chipboard. So I think that should be good. We can pop all these pieces up. We want the polka dot side up, so I'm gluing this nice and flat onto the lady side. Perfect. So now that it is adhered to this piece of paper, I'm just going to cut along those edges. 
cutting this out on the side top but on the bottom I'm gonna leave a little bit in the center I'll show you so just a bit in the center like so and then I'll continue to cut around this chipboard this way when no matter what angle people are looking at your box it's going to be beautiful and it's also a great way to use up those papers. So by adding this little extra lip on the bottom this is going to help me create a place to glue this adhere this down. So in the directions it doesn't um, say to do this. I just was thinking about it when I was uh, looking at this step and thought that that would be a great addition. So if you did it as the project sheet says, go ahead and just add your adhesive to the bottom of your chipboard, just like it instructs. Um, we will do that as well as adding some adhesive to this extra little flap. So we want to just take a liquid adhesive and add a nice line of adhesive to the chipboard itself. And then if you have created a flap like I have, we will do that. Now making sure our box is facing the right way towards me, I am going to go ahead and adhere this piece down. So leaving about an inch of space in the front and Adhering down our extra little piece. Oops. <laughs> we'll have to go back and adhere that as well. And now this is just going to rest. And then I'll add some more adhesive on those flowers that are rolling around. Step 17, we are going to take one of these cut aparts from Your Highness. And we are going to fussy cut out this princess here. So we just want to grab her gown. I'm going to do a loose cut around her and then I'll go in and get all those details. And you know what, I want to use my sharper scissors, my sharpest of the, in the bunch. And then we'll go ahead and fussy cut out this beautiful princess. This we are going to adhere onto the top of that chipboard piece we just put down, just adding some extra dimension. Now that we fussy cut out our princess, we are going to play around with it because we want it to go on top of this chipboard. So you can see it's really going to add an extra layer to our project. So now that I have where I know I want it, where it's not going to uh, take away from the message and you can still see this sweet little princess kneeling, uh, we are going to, I'm just kind of using my fingernail, but you could use a bone folder and create kind of a little goat fold area. And then using that as a guideline, I am going to cut off just about, I'd say a half an inch with that as my guide. And now I'm gonna add some adhesive and then I'll adhere this onto my front. So because her head goes off a little bit of the chipboard, I want to make sure not to add adhesive all the way up there so it doesn't get all over my project. All right, and then now that I found my placement, I can use my bone folder and seal this down. So now we are going to take the rest of our embellishments that we have dolled up and just go ahead and glue 
this on. So I want the end of my stem to be at the base of my queen or princess. And then I want a little bit of leaf coming off the front. And then I'm gonna take one of those largest roses. And this is gonna be just nicely in this corner. So add some adhesive, play with those petals. That is gonna stay there. Let it dry and then I'm gonna take one of these super cute smaller flowers and adhere that just next to our big rose, kind of mimicking what we have going on there. And then we've got our bud left. So you can see we just want to kind of thread this behind what we've already created. Nicely there, pull our leaf out. And then just taking some scissors, we will cut this edge off. Or, you know, we could try another fun thing where we could take a pencil and wrap that around there and just create a more fun little cute little curly cue stem. You do you and improvise to see what you like best, but you know, finding something even thinner than a pencil create a super cute little curly cue. And our one last step is to take one of these chipboard pieces with a crown on there, and I've added some foam adhesive to the back, and I'm just going to add this to that corner. And then taking one of the chipboard circles, I'm just going to place this nicely in here so you can see I have added a little bit of that acrylic paint to my chipboard pieces out here added on those few extra pieces and voila we have quite a gorgeous little trinket box ready to store all of your goodies we hope you enjoyed this fun tutorial and be sure to uh, take part in our uh, double fun fold flap card as well. And as always, share your projects with us. We want to see what you're creating. Uh, use the club G45 hashtag. And as always, thanks so much and happy paper crafting. Bye.